Hello, how are you on this pretty dreary June day in the UK? Um, I think it's about time we had a little chat. <laughs> Why I continue to talk to myself, that's many reasons involved. And I don't even really know what I'm going to say, but there's quite a bit going on that I'd like to get out. Um, first thing that comes to mind is I've talked about heart palpitations before. Um, so I think it's important to note for anyone who's been actually watching my videos, the few who seem to, um, it does appear that I'm now sort of over the main thrust of these and I'm not even sure if it's actually heart palpitation. I think it might have something to do with the pancreas because it's known that um, the pancreas has two creates enzymes, the pancreas creates and stores enzymes um, and releases them when they're needed. Now it it is well known that um, part of the pancreas uh, fails in pretty much everybody um, once they've reached adulthood and well not fails but sort of reduces what it can do to such an extent that it's practically zero. Now, mainly the pancreas um, chucks out digestive enzymes to di digest food. Well, I mean enzymes are needed for every single reaction in the body, so its, it's main, its fatter end um, does all of that. And its other end, the thinner end, which I imagine would be in the centre about here, um, releases enzymes which are rarer. And it's known that it's operating quite well in children, and but as it gets older, it, it reduces its um, ability. So I think it might have something to do with the pancreas. Um, rather than the heart, but it is in the in the central part of your torso. So when I'm feeling stuff there, you know that is like the most important part for me. That is the centre. And I always knew since the beginning, and I've said it before, that you know when I first started getting feelings like first things that were happening to me was facial contortions you know I I I couldn't help it it was just what was happening was I was pulling faces and I wasn't forcing it, it was just happening and along with that was a realization of some issue I had so I'd pull a very arrogant face you know it was arrogance that I had in me that I hadn't really been aware of and stuff like that it's actually visible in one of my videos from Faithful Philosopher. Um, so I kind of knew right from the beginning that it would that it would at some point get to feeling stuff in the core of my torso, which if I had had in the very beginning, I would have been scared stiff and, <laughs> you know, certainly not tried to do it again and probably just try and do things to avoid it happening. Um, so when it when I first started getting stuff nearer towards the core, like heart palpitations, and I wasn't sure why. And it, I wouldn't say I wouldn't even call them heart palpitations. Which I shouldn't probably because it's. I don't think the heart is in the center. I know it can move a bit, but it's more on the left. So, you know, it was definitely central stuff that I was feeling. Anyway, as as I've said in videos recently, you know, I've had some, I felt like at one occasion I was sort of making up with Father God because I'd had this fear in me which I kind of 
realised was like uh, had come from my mother. Now let's say, um, you know, my dad could be aggressive in terms of his, you know, speech and stuff, um, and his body language and everything, but wouldn't actually beat my mum, but on occasions when they got very angry with each other, um, he might raise a hand, but as far as I'm aware, he never contacted with her. She kicked him a couple of times, I think, like, you know, if he was coming towards her and kicking him off. So where something at a young age occurred that, you know, I don't have any clear memory of, but maybe I have still the emotional remembrance of, or I, I definitely did, because I I felt that. I felt like... And remember, when we're babies, we kind of mix up, because we're very familiar with Mother and Father God when we're babies, and then when we're born, we sort of start to get confused and sort of mix that up with our physical mother and father. So by my mum being scared of my dad, say on one occasion, do you know what I mean? It might have only been for five minutes. Um, and if I was there as a baby, I felt that fear. Um, you know, and that could have been one of my first fears, one of the earliest ones, and um, and it most likely was, which could suggest that I'm I'm at the end of the soul repair business, or it's not really soul repair, it's the connection to your soul. Check as we're um, So, I said in the video, I felt like a, it felt like um. So, you know, there's a couple of occasions God came to me and I got a little bit scared of Father God. I made a video about that. That's one called I Heard God in Faithful Philosopher, one of the last few. Um, and then, so later on, I wanted to get back into that feeling again of Father God being so real and close at that point as it was. Um, but it wasn't quite happening. And then it kind of, And then it did. And and then I had this realization, what I've just explained about being a baby and mum being scared of my dad and me allaying that to Father God and having kept that within me. And it felt like a, a, a thorn, like this direction, so sort of like a, a triangle like that was in, stuck in there. And having had that realization, it was like a, Oh, and that's why I was scared uh, last time when you were... So I felt you wanted to take me away or something. Um, and it and it just sort of... I just felt it remove. So I do believe that that was one of the, you know... One of the things I was thinking right from the beginning, I knew that I would have to face. It's like I knew it was there, but I had no understanding of what at the time, but just kind of knew. And I'd say that wasn't the, the most difficult thing I ever did. It wasn't the... I didn't have to have more courage than I ever had on anything else. I guess it was just, you know taking things as they come that's what I've been doing I haven't tried to order anything or do this first and then that you know it's been none of that it's just whatever comes up comes up deal with that uh, so you know I should be I, I mean I am I am <laughs> over the moon um, I've I've had quite a lot of other stuff going on um, uh, with my son and stuff. He's living with me full time. Been a little bit of a naughty boy at school, I'm sorting that out. Um, it's just the age. It's twelve. Um, so that's been keeping me busy. So I haven't been able to sort of meditate as much. But I had, it was weird because the day that he 
it wasn't one day that he finally came to live with me. I mean, it was a bit like that, like before Christmas, it was a few weeks, there was troubles he had, and then another occasion like that. And then I was sitting there meditating, and I was thinking, okay, God, and this was after the splinter removal, but still quite a while ago now, a few months. You know, I was thinking, what am I going to do now? What, what's because I felt like, you know, you know, I've, I've kind, of, I have kind of saturated my desire for more truth. There's actually no more burning questions I have, and it seems like I may have done the bulk of my um, connection to my soul uh, issues. I mean, I've still got the soulmate thing which is still a big thing but kind of have I shouldn't have any control over that should I because you know she's got her free will and so why should I try and do anything that's only going to make it harder and that's kind of what I'm realising uh, so um, I was like what am I going to do <laughs> what's next what's the next thing and um and then it was the phone call, or the situation. Yeah, I think it was a phone call. Come and get your son. <laughs> so, that was my answer. And, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been good. It's been good. And I like it. I prefer it like this. Definitely. Uh... So just one point, you know, here I am, I've just said, oh, I've, uh, you know, I've learned all the truth I wanted to learn. Well, that's like burning at the moment anyway, you know, there's nothing major in my mind that I think, oh, I really want to know. But, I mean, there's loads of stuff I want to know, right? But there's nothing like real standout-ish like there has been over the last few years. And that, um, you know, I've healed my issues that I can fully connect with my soul, I have no issues there, and yet here I am puffing on a, call it a cigarette, um, when I, when I sit and I feel my soul, so, <clears throat> I realise I was around before this life and I will be around afterwards and my life is a continual experience and here I am in the present feeling knowing myself and once you start feeling your soul God is there soulmates there inside um, I have no you know, I can have no desire for a cigarette. So I could think about smoking and there's no willpower to say no because I'm feeling my soul. There's no, you know, come into my mind <coughs> and as long as I remain feeling my soul, <coughs> no desire to do anything else. I could, you know, I could probably quite happily sit there forever. In that moment of time. But, you get distractions. Plus, well, you know, you'd have to go to sleep, I might yawn, and then I'd be tired. And I'd think, well, I need to go to sleep. I need some sleep. But also we're in, you know, we're in this physical world with day and night and and there's food we can eat and there's leaves we can smoke and there's, um, uh, there's places we can go and, and we can go and see people, you know, so in a sense using what's available to you. Um, You know, if you if there's something you do and you like, and you don't actually see that's causing much harm, um, then why shouldn't you do it? Well, 
denying yourself pleasure is is that you know is that good you know you wanna you want to suffer uh, I just thought I'd make that point that when I'm feeling my soul yeah you know, there's nothing that could tempt me away apart from the fact that I'm still in a physical body on a physical earth and I don't particularly want to disappear you know because Probably one of the things that I'm getting most pleasure from now is um, noticing more and more people get nearer the truth. That's, um, that's what I'm finding most pleasure in. When I was meditating and I was thinking to myself that this is what I need to be doing, like the world needs me to do this, <laughs> it definitely upped the ante. It's like now I'm more sort of like it's God's plan, you know, I'm not getting it today, I'll do something else doesn't feel like it's happening today sort of thing um, and I suppose that part of the reason I'm making this video now is because I'd sat down to meditate before and and I was I had that thought you know oh when I was thinking that I had to do this to save the world it was definitely more more going on in a sense but I think there was there may have been a lot of invention on my behalf my heart part of enemies you know suddenly the thought that oh I'm the messiah and you know the phone's ringing because it's trying to stop me from doing this and I mean it's still what that when those things happened and that's what I was believing it's still real but it's like I can't force myself to, th to think like that anymore because then I'd be faking it and I'd know I'd be faking it so it's like I can't repeat it which I think is probably quite a good thing I don't need to be repeating it and you know, the world has definitely changed. The world is definitely changing. It's probably up and down a bit. Um, and I can never know if that had anything to do with me. I did wonder about going back and looking at the dates and trying to figure out, yeah, I, I know I had a major one then. You know, what happened in the world a day after, a week after, a month after. And that's the thing, you wouldn't know how long it would take. But I think, because, you know, I do believe that by somebody, say somebody come becoming comfortable um, there with Mother and Father God has an effect on every other soul there is. But what sort of effect, and that it affects some more than others? Like I said, I'm just glad when I hear that people are coming towards the truth. And I'm more and more confident that it is the truth that I've been discovering and trying to communicate. And... Um, Maybe I don't communicate it perfectly, <clears throat> but I'm seeing that people are coming to similar conclusions.
and it's all going that way. And it needs to, you know, definitely. I think yesterday I was sitting there and I was thinking, no, actually not yesterday, earlier. God's plan is unfolding. So I was imagining this plan unfolding, like a map, if you like. Be a map or a plan, you know. And you know, as it's unfolding, you're getting to see a glimpse of it opening. And you go, oh, oh, I think that's I think that's right. Oh, I think it's saying that, you know. But you're not sure until it fully opens. And I would say now, you know, my for me, there is this open plan now in front of me. I know that to sit and feel my soul is the where we're going. Because there's a whole, there's a whole new, it is, it is three dimensional, you know, when, you, when I'm sitting there feeling, there are things coming from all over the place. And it's, um, you know, and it's like, you know, here we have in this realm a 3D space. And, you know, a postman could deliver something through my letterbox and that's something it drops on the floor over there. You know, and there's a limit, isn't there, to what we can have in the physical. And I would say on the, on the soul realm, you know, it's, it's just so much more. Everything is more. Everything is more. And so I know, you know, I'm looking at, I've got the, the thing open in front of me. And I know there's billions of years worth of exploration there. So it's very, you know, it's very sort of, there's no rush. Um, it's just take it as it comes. It's, you know you're going to be learning. And I, I do, there are stages of learning. There's this live, love, grow, play. What was it? Learn, sorry. Live, love, learn, grow, play. Uh, what order is that? And it goes kind of with the seasons of the year. So grow would be summer, wouldn't it? Or grow would be spring. Grow would be spring. So grow, let's start with spring. Grow. Summer would be love. No, I think that's winter. Uh, summer would then be learn. So you grow, and then you learn. So I guess learning would be absorbing information. And then you play with that. You play with that. Play great to play. You've got the new information. Play with it. And then love. Because that's a winter thing. Winter thing. Anyway. So, um, so stages of learning, you know, because you're not always learning. You're not always absorbing this information. And the growing is very much um, an enjoyable thing. You know, it's great to grow, isn't it? It's great to notice that you've grown and I can really, really see how I've grown um, over the last six years. I had a, a little recollection earlier of, I was trying to remember, you know, when I'd had a depression wave and I was trying to remember when it was and I'd had a couple. And as I was trying to remember, I just remembered again what it felt like. And um, so, so horrible. Just, you know, it only lasted a couple of seconds, but so disturbing. Why would, it, why would that happen? Why would I get that? Thinking that when it happened six years ago and it was like the second time 
a time previous may have been a few months before but and it was just like I really didn't know what I was doing I just really didn't have I just really didn't know you know where my life was going what I was doing I had disconnected myself emotionally because I had stuff going on you know divorce uh, my son you know, little boy uh, lived with me half the time part of the time so you know and I just and it was just this wave of just like this fee this this uh, I wouldn't have called it a void, I would have just called it like, you know, a real stark warning, like, yeah, and I've I've heard it said, like, feels like you don't belong. I think that's probably the most, the best way to put it. You just don't feel like you belong. You just feel like it's wrong where you are and everything. It's just wrong. It's not right. It didn't belong. So I've come from that, come from that, and so uh, at the time my belief of God is that, that ev God was everybody put together. So when I would say a prayer or appeal to God I felt like I was appealing to everybody. Um, and I think if, if I look back on the Faithful Philosopher videos, that's probably when I began then to start thinking about God. And um, I'm not sure if I mentioned it in a video back then about this. I'm pretty sure it was in summertime. And I guess the year would have been, maybe it was longer ago. I don't know, 2012, maybe yeah, it was 2013, because, yeah, that would make sense, I think, that would make sense with the moon moods as well, That because an odd year in the summer, boys are coming down, so, you know, I wouldn't have understood that at the time. And I was on well into this Nibiru thing, thinking that chemtrails were hiding at stopping us from seeing Nibiru and and um I mean there was a lot of dodgy stuff going on, but it was that was all pretty negative, wasn't it so with a belief of we're all God, you know who you sort of yearn to everybody it's sort of difficult and evasive, how's that going to work? So how, then starting to think, then starting to explore, it was that, it was, it was just starting to explore it, you know, I'd read the Bible and everything and I'd gone through the Dan Brown thing, Da Vinci Code sort of making out like Jesus was a normal man and stuff like that um, but I had had a Jesus experience already so I think that was also a a thing in my mind of um, you know something unanswered it is something that doesn't add up why did why did th thinking of the word Jesus and then feeling better after being in a really bad place because I'd just been kicked out stayed with her auntie for a couple of weeks and then I'd got this little dungeon of a room cheap and I had this low moment and I looked up and there were six spotlights in the roof and I just for some reason thought Jesus and I felt felt really nice um, so yeah, so that was something in there, but I had sort of, I hadn't, you know, I hadn't tackled it really. I, I was a bit confused by it. I thought, oh, okay. Don't mind feeling better. <laughs> I'll think on that one. So anyway, so yeah, just starting to seek. 
So then a year goes by. And I'm making videos saying heaven is coming to earth. I've felt like I've seen angels or, or people um, that I knew in life, uh, family who'd passed, and and then stumbled on the A.J. Miller. And it was that was the point when I changed my mind about what God was. I think I may have started to, because I started to see. Um, a circuit and in front of me, I just used to sort of close my eyes listening to music because I was in a band, so I often used to listen to the practice, the recordings of the practices afterwards. So I wasn't meditating, I was busy doing something, if you like. Um, and, I, and I used to see this sort of, so, and sometimes the feelings got quite strong, and I, so maybe I started to, I did think, I started to get a sense that that God was not just all of us. God was something separate. And I guess the bit God being all of us never made sense in the sense of like, well then, how did it all get created? And, you know, left so many unanswered questions. Um, so yeah, so then A.J. Miller was a big thing. And... I do want to give him credit, but I don't want to give him all the credit, do you know what I mean? It's like, it's just some bloke I watched on YouTube, really. And, you know, the guy talks so much truth, but then breaks the cardinal sin. Which probably I could be accused of as well. Anyone could accuse anyone of it. Yeah. Whatever, you know, it was partly him, his belief seemed so strong. God, it's our mother and father, it's a separate being, it's an entity. And you know, and then hearing that and taking that on, and it just clicked. It just clicked in. And there's no doubt in my mind that that, that depression the year before and then that seeking and that finding and that doing actually putting it into practice and in a sense being quite grateful that I've been able to that I had a business that was going quite well until sort of again 2013 where just iPads meant most people who didn't really need a computer who weren't really that interested in finding out how it works and everything didn't really need it get an iPad they don't break and you don't really need a computer engineer I did that a couple of times. Anyway, really dropped off. So I had all this time. Um, and my son, with his mum and stepdad moving 20 miles away, and them saying to me, uh, you can't have him as much as you were having him before, blah, blah, blah. You know, all that was going on. So I had the time. I had the time to put it into practice. To say a prayer to God and kind of think, God, okay, I, I want to do what you want me to do you know, for once. I want to try that. I want to try and let you teach me. Whatever happens, you're teaching me something. Um, you know, and... My journey has been vlogged from the Faithful Philosopher channel. Um, I've never purposely told a lie. I've always just said what I believed was going on. And I'm, I'm really very, very glad because now I don't get a wave of depression and feel like I don't belong. Any time I want to, I can make the time, sit down. Yes, I use herbs to help. And that's fine, because they're natural. And all the people in the Bible are doing it. <laughs> so, the Indians do it, 
I mean, you know, the American Indians, you know what I mean? And the Indians do it. They all do it, right? It's a plant. It's the fourth element, fire, you know? Stick it in your mouth and smoke it. But, I know, I know Father God is always there. And I know Mother God is always there and around. Every atom is our mother. And every photon is our father. <laughs> I think it's something like that. But that's just in this one physical realm. Then we've got the spiritual realm. Then we've got the dominant realm, the emotional realm. So everything happening there. Right? And it feeds out to wherever. But we've always got... Uh, those 11 dimensions and we are in mother and father's universe when we're in our physical bodies but our emotional center is in our own universe we have a universe too as physical as spiritual you've all got one but yeah so you know when i feel when i start feeling my soul or anything like that wow <laughs> do i belong <laughs> right this is my universe. I'm feeling my universe. Of course I belong. We are all members of the eternal tree of life. Correct. Um, so, that is certainly, um, uh, you know, any, any time I feel like I've got pressure from authorities within this world, in a sense, you know, I remind myself who the real boss is, you know. It's our mum and dad, and hey, it's our mum and dad. And oh yeah, that's one thing I was thinking about this morning I wanted to say. It's like, I was thinking, oh, should I should do a video explaining, if I was going to explain it to my son. Well, I was thinking, get my son to do a video, but I, he won't, I don't think. You know, to get him to ask questions like, so if I say to you, um, you know, God is always there with you, right? God's always there with you. That's what it's like on the feeling, but it's like somebody's there with you. You can feel them, right? But we, most people, 99.99% of people aren't feeling God um, because of how we've been trained since we're young. But all every single baby that's born is still feeling God, both mother and father. So how does God, you know, and you think, how does God keep in touch with um, uh, billions and billions of his, her children all the time? How can it always be in touch? And I was thinking like a spider on a spider web. Yeah, spiders sitting in the middle of the web, legs on the strands. So, mother and father, God, must have a heck of a lot of legs in this analogy. And they're feeling they're there. And any time anytime something in my heart goes, uh, you know, Hi God, I want to feel you now. Where are you, God? Please don't let me down. <laughs> and then God feels that heart response on there and response and you know if God wanted to send something you just trigger a finger and send something so I have a feeling that's that's in a sense a way you can imagine how God could be in touch with everybody all the time so it's possible but we've got you know before we can really understand what what it's like for God, really, we need to know ourselves first, and then we can we can start to wonder about that. And um, we've got billions of years to to learn all about it. Yeah. So how long have we been going? Forty minutes.
I also think about where we've, how far we've come uh, in terms of the world and society. Things that were happening seven years ago, you know, ten years ago, twenty years ago, or even just a few years ago. I really do feel like society has moved on massively. And we're going to keep on moving, aren't we? It's uh, unstoppable. We're not, not going to. What was I thinking of before? And the thing that just popped into my head now is there was that little phase of where young people were on video, like just surprise punching a member of a person on the street, like because it was such a surprise. I think you know there were a couple of deaths from that. You know, that was horrible. There's still problems, but it's like all the gangs and stuff coming into the UK, you know. They could solve that if they legalised drugs, because it's all down to the drugs business, so just legalise it, get all the tax. I mean, it seems like a no brainer to me. But I just think, yeah, there used to be so much more unhappiness. I think people are finding the meditation and the mindfulness and, you know, there's a way now. You can, there is a way. If you find yourself depressed and unhappy, the, count, the counselling is good, you know, the they could be better, but um, but more than that is um, you know how people are sharing their own experiences on the radio, poets, or whatever. You know, more and more people are getting it. They're sharing it. And that is God's plan. Take note, we got to do it one day. Probably in about 10 billion years, we will be in the position God is in now. We'll have 100 billion children. We've given them four billion years worth of experience of living lives and we've been getting to know them we know, we know exactly what they're like and they're all different and they've got a bit of us in them And you'd really love those children of yours. You'd nurtured them for four billion years. And they were only just beginning to work it out, to understand what they were, what they've got ahead of them. Just good. Good times. And you always knew the most difficult bit was going to be awakening them as to what they are.
because there's they've got great power. You have to teach them first the pitfalls. So when you do something bad in a physical life, you murder someone. You want to exterminate them. You want to wipe them off the earth so that they're gone. At least if you've done that on earth, you didn't permanently <coughs> you didn't permanently kill us all and you stabbed them and you killed them and their spirit body rose up you ended their physical life you ended one of a million lives that they've had it's not nice you know and before they can come back and have another life, they're going to have to have forgiven you. They're going to have to have repented for everything they've done. Reset. Back to, back to scratch. And that's how we've learned. And that's what deja vu, I've had deja vus. I've had many deja vus. Not so much recently, but earlier in my life. Deja vu's. My first deja vu was turning up to. Um, I was at primary school, last year of primary school, and we got a week trip away. We went to Wales, Glazebury. And turning up at that place, I felt like as the bus pulled up and parked, or as it was coming in, yeah, as, as we were getting really close to it, I really felt like. You know, I've been here before. I feel it wasn't. I've been here before. I've been here before in this situation, or this scenario, in a sense. And it was a really good déjà vu. It felt so nice. And um, then you know, I had other déjà vu. It's not as strong as that one. But then I was about uh, 18, 19 maybe, and I was saving up to go to Africa and I was expecting a phone call the next morning to see if I'd get this job. And the night before I was at my mates smoking weed and I got this triple deja vu, boom, boom, boom. It's like, been here before. And it was a triple one, dong, dong, dong. And um, I thought I've got to do something different because it wasn't nice. It wasn't a nice deja vu. I've got to do something different. So, what? Because I think I'd had a couple a little bit before, and so I'd been already a little bit unnerved by the deja vu feeling. So I. Um, I did what I wouldn't have done, so I said I, I'm going, and I left, um, and I went home, into bed, got woken up by the phone the next morning, managed to make it, yeah, I'd like to offer you a job, oh brilliant, yeah, and that, if I hadn't have gone to Africa, my life would not, it would not have been anything like it has been. That was instrumental. So, that's just given me the idea that if in the last three previous lives I did just say in my previous life, maybe a similar situation, sitting there smoking, double deja vu, thinking, oh, what the fuck's that? Oh. Cameron's fucking me. <laughs> Yeah, most likely. So quite possibly I have altered my path, what should have been, on more than one occasion in previous lives. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> but things are as they're meant to be, right? God knew I'd do it. He knew I'd wait till the triple one. Boom, boom, boom. 
Because after that, I started getting these different feelings. I was excited about it. I knew it was going to be happening then. I think I got this job, so I'm earning some money, doing my part. I had to earn up half. My dad would give me the other half. So I knew, I knew it was happening. I started getting these excitement feelings, but there was something more to it. So it was like a deja vu. Imagine deja vu is black and white TV. It was now colour TV. So there was another element to it. But there's still good and bad ones. Ha oh, ha, this is awesome. I'm actually explaining something. Even though no one's going to watch this bloody video. You blah 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 blah. It's not your fault. Anyway, who blame you? You will, eventually. Um, so right, so we, we've got something clear. So many people have had deja vus. So deja vus is the beginning. But you're talking black and white TV. You've got good and you've got bad. A good deja vu and a bad deja vu. You know whether it feels good or not, if you're honest. I think, you know, I'd had deja vus before. I thought, cool, deja vu, but then had this sort of, it didn't really feel very nice. Okay? So deja vu black and white TV. Start using it, you know, and when you act on it and it pays off, that's not something you're going to forget. You're going to know the results of that. So what do you do on a good deja vu? You don't do anything. You know, it's good. Cool. I'm on the right track. Bad deja vu. Right. Do what I, you know, do what I wasn't going to do before I got that deja vu type thing. And then, then they'll start, and then you'll get a deja vu with a bit of colour. And that'll be different. Go with it. And then, I mean, that was just things that I had no control over. Then you start getting to the point where you can actively uh, take control, in a sense, of that dominant realm. Your control in the dominant realm, which feeds the spiritual and the physical realms, then, then you've got nothing to worry about. You feel a feeling in the dominant realm, which is emotion. And emotion just doesn't mean crying, by the way. You know, I have definitely cried with emotion. Uh, that was more in the beginning. Um, occasionally, sometimes, like, the eyes hurt so much when the tears come out. Anyway... But yeah, so, so so many emotions. You know, it's an emotion. It, like it's it's overwhelming. It overwhelms you. It's everything there is at that point. So if you're doing stuff in that dominant realm. Uh, you know, you feel the emotion there. You've dealt with it. It doesn't need then to feed into the physical and spiritual, because you've dealt with it. It only feeds into the physical and spiritual when you don't recognise it up here. Anyway, sorry I'm preaching. It always comes back on me when I give advice. <laughs> if I give advice today, I need to listen to it tomorrow. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I think that, I think it's coming to a nice end. Well, thanks if you listened. And uh, see you next time. Bye.